Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Rec Roll. All right, it is the third day of my long weekend. We hopefully have some good rain coming tonight and hopefully for the next few days, which should help the rain barrel a little bit over there. We'll get a little, get that thing filled up. Um, we ended up a little rain a day or two after I installed that thing. It only rained for about 15 or 20 minutes, but we got like an inch and a half of rain in that time, and it did fill up that barrel. So uh, that was a good place for it. I've actually used all the water out of there because I just took it, you know, took it out and uh, fed it into the garden over here, into the garden over here, and got everything kind of uh, well watered so I wouldn't have to worry, worry that much about running the sprinklers, which is always a good thing when we're in a drought. And that was sort of what that thing was all about. But today I got a couple of just chores I need to do. Uh, first off, I'm getting a little fuzzy, so it's time to go get a haircut. Got to do that once in a while. I also got one other thing I have to do for work. Uh, the work is to, uh, has started monitoring our health a little bit. They want to make sure we're, we're okay. I work in kind of a noisy environment, so they want to check my hearing, they want to check my vision, and all sorts of stuff like that. Now they've done the vision checks, but I need to go in and have audiometric testing done. And uh, at some point they're gonna actually uh, have a audiometric uh, testing facility at work, but right now they don't. So they've sent me into a clinic to have my ears checked just to make sure everything's good. I'm not having any damage from uh, working in a noisy environment. We did the same thing at Disney. So, you know, I understand that and it's a good idea. So I'm gonna go do that today. But before I do that, I gotta deal with something else of a personal nature. You may recall a couple years ago, I went in and had my ears flushed out. I have a high degree of wax creation in my ears and eventually it builds up to the point where it starts, you know, covering up the eardrum and it starts reducing my hearing. Well, if I'm gonna have audiometric testing done, I wanna get that all cleaned up and and basically it's time to do that anyway. Even if I wasn't doing the audiometric testing, I'd wanna do that because it's getting to the point where it's not gonna be long before I get plugged up. Uh, usually the last uh, a couple weeks before I get plugged up, I start noticing that when I take a shower and get a little bit of water in my ear, my ear canal gets plugged up for a short while until everything dries out. So that's starting to happen a little bit right now. So before I get to the point where I'm completely plugged up, I'm gonna go and deal with that today. So those are the tasks for today. I don't know what I'm gonna do for a vlog after that, but when I come home, I'll try and figure out something. I'll see you then. All right, we are back uh, from doing all my chores. I got my ears lowered, got my ears flushed, got my ears tested. So it was just kind of a three ear day. Now I'm just gonna kind of figure out what to do. Uh, I think one of the things maybe I need to do is go get another seed cake for the bird feeder. I filled that thing up, uh, I don't know, just a couple weeks ago and uh, the bird activity has been very good this year. Uh, and they've basically just eaten the seed cake to to the ground. I always know when we're getting close to the uh, feeder being empty because the squirrels start hanging out right below the feeder. Apparently when the birds eat they're kind of sloppy eaters and they end up uh, dripping a bunch of the seeds on the ground and of course the squirrels are all too willing to be there and snap it up. Especially now that I've uh, made the bird feeder uh, squirrel proof here with the double baffles. They really have nothing to worry about though. They get so much food because I feed them too. There's one there uh, checking out that. Also got one over here in the tree. He's been sitting there ever since I got home. I guess he found some, some of the food I put on the ground and he's just munching on that. So as you know, I replanted this section back here a few weeks back. It's actually doing pretty well. The hydrangeas are starting to bloom a little bit. See, that one's doing really well. The elephant ear came back, which really kind of surprised me. I didn't think uh, I'd get that back. Uh, one of them came back, the other two didn't. That's something else. That was something I planted there. And then of course these ivies are doing really well. And even my philodendron here. That survived and that kind of bounced back. I don't know what these are, if these are a weed or, or something, but they're kind of interesting looking. So we'll let them do what they do. That might just be some of this ivy that's on the neighbor's fence. 
And the Lantania is doing well. It's even attracting butterflies, so. That's always kind of cool when you see that happening. That's one of the things I like doing with plants whenever possible is uh, making them bee and butterfly friendly. Even hummingbird, uh, if we get those. We don't get a whole lot of hummingbirds here, but. Do get some pretty colorful butterflies. Not a lot of activity in the uh, garden garden yet, uh, but all the plants are alive and soon to be healthy. So we'll just kind of see what happens. Keep watering it really well and uh, hopefully we'll get a good crop of stuff here. See a little lizard action, action happening on the pipe back here. are chameleons. I used to have those in my yard in California too. I know some people call them geckos but they're actually chameleons. They can change color. Kind of wandering around the yard here trying to figure out where Flash is. I don't know. She could be somewhere anywhere in the yard right now. She's been sleeping in that thing a lot lately but she's not in there now. Squirrels are a little bit more tame than they used to. I think they know at this point I'm not going to try and eat them. And that food comes when, I, uh, when I'm around, so maybe they're a little bit more tolerant now. Truth is, I'm only about 12 feet away from that one. And he doesn't seem to be too terribly bothered about me being here. So I do think I'm going to go try and find another seed cake for the bird feeder and I got to make a trip to the grocery store anyway. So I'll do that and I'll catch up with you a little bit. All right, I got another seed cake up for the birds. That should hopefully keep them uh, coming by for another couple weeks. Uh, what I usually do, uh, since the squirrels are very much interested in the seed, seed cakes too, is I'll take the remains of the last one and I'll just put them down here on the ground and the squirrels can help themselves to them now. That's all theirs. So this one's for the birds. That one's for the squirrels. I also got some more uh, corn for the squirrels. So, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm leaving the squirrels out. Now, probably just going to kick back and enjoy the rest of the day. We're hopefully supposed to have some rain coming in tonight. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to hopefully filling up my rain barrel again over there. And uh, we could definitely use it. The weather actually shows that it's rain, a uh, high, high degree of likelihood of rain for the next five or six days. So that's always a good thing. I love being home during a rainstorm. And if we get anything interesting, I will definitely show you. All right, it's actually the next morning now. Uh, we didn't get any rain last night. I was a little disappointed at that. But this morning it kind of picked up a little bit about 6 a.m and it's been kind of raining kind of steadily like this now for probably the last six hours so i was looking at the radar the radar just kind of shows that there's this kind of low pressure system that's parked over uh over this part of texas over central texas and it's not really a powerful storm it's not dropping a lot of rain in a very small amount of time but it is dropping a steady amount of rain and probably in the last six hours we've gotten about an inch and a half uh, you can see the yard is a little bit uh, flooded here, and in fact, if you look at the, uh, the skimmer of, uh, box on the pool, the pool's overflowing, so that's always good. Um, I'm also kind of happy my rain barrel's full. In fact, it's so full right now, there's actually water on the top, so that's good. I got a nice 50 gallons of water here. I've actually drained it a couple times to get water in the buckets here to get even more water, and you know, you put five gallons of water in the bucket here and the water level here goes down, but it takes less than like 30, 35 seconds for the water to start overflowing again. So that's how quickly the water is coming out of here. Yeah, you can really kind of see it there. So this is a good rain. Um, I'm supposed to do this now for another few hours and then uh, kind of uh, peter out. 
Now I think there's a couple more things that I want to do today before we wrap up this video. Um, both of them involve a trip to Home Depot. First off, I think I want to go get a watering gardening can for uh, the yard. Well, you know, one of those things you can put water in and like it comes out in a little, uh, you know, a little, in a little shower rather than uh, other ways. Because I've been using the five gallon buckets for taking water out of the rain barrel. And, you know, some of the stuff I have is a little bit delicate and I don't want to be just pouring five gallons of water on it. Uh, I'd rather use have some kind of a watering can. So I think I'm going to go get one of those. Additionally, I have um, a couple of plants I put in the front yard a few years ago. You may recall right after I moved into the house, I had a problem with the sewer line and they had to tunnel under the house. Well, when they tunnel under the house, they killed a couple of the plants that were at the place where they started tunneling. So I replaced them with a couple of Texas lilacs and uh, they've been doing really, really well. They're getting really, really big, but they're getting so big right now, they're starting to lean a little bit. So what I wanna do is go get some stakes, some heavy duty stakes, something that can tie, tie these things up with and uh, hopefully make them stand up straight. So like I said, those are both Home Depot things. Let's head to Home Depot. All right, I'm back from Home Depot. I got my watering can and I got some of the spikes for uh, holding up the, uh, the lilac in the front yard. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you a whole bunch about the uh, putting the spikes in the lilac because it's gonna show too much of the front, front yard and it's more than, I'd be showing you more than I really wanna have online. So you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm gonna pound them into the ground and tie the lilac up to them and uh, and I think this will do good. Now, I'm actually kind of glad I could find something kind of heavy duty like this. These are pieces of wood. They're probably three quarters of an inch on a side. So it's a nice thick piece of uh, wood. I can bang it. You know, it's about probably this one's about five foot long. So I can bang it into the ground a foot or foot and a half. And it'll provide a strong support. I've been thinking about using like those, uh, the green one, the green spikes that you can get like at Home Depot that, uh, um, you know, or maybe three eighths of an inch in diameter, maybe a half inch in diameter. And it's like aluminum in the middle and then it's got a plastic coating on the outside. But I've had problems with those. Those bend too much. And it isn't a good thing to use for something where it's either going to be really a really heavy thing that it's supporting or something that's capable of dealing with uh, extreme winds, which we can get here in Texas. So I'm going to be, I'm happier with, with this. I think these spikes are... Uh, thicker than the than the branches they're going to be holding up and I got some of this garden tape stuff here that you can use to to wrap everything up and so I think this is going to do a good job holding the uh, the lilac up and uh, so we're going to go and put that in the front yard now I got one more thing I want to show you so as you know, last week I went over to a rock and mineral show and picked up some really nice specimens uh, for my personal collection. But collecting rocks and things like that has been something that I've been interested for basically almost all of my life. And I actually have a pretty healthy collection of rocks and minerals and fossils and stuff like that. Most of that I used to keep on the mantle of my fireplace, but it's getting to the point where there isn't enough room up there for everything to display everything properly and I've been thinking for a while I want to build a display case for all of my all of my rocks and minerals and fossils and stuff like that the question is where do I put it you know uh, you may have noticed every inch of every uh, section of every one of the walls in this house is covered with stuff and uh, so where do I uh, where do I put something big enough to hold all my rock collection? And then all of a sudden I look down. I got this big empty space under this table here. I store you know my block rocker and a chair and an umbrella and stuff like that under there. But that doesn't need to go there. That could all go somewhere else. And that would be actually a very nice space right there for a uh, mineral display. So I think I'm going to build some sort of a case that's going under here. Uh, it's going to be on wheels so I can pull it out. It's going to be about eight feet long, so it'll basically go to this to the to this box all the way to the end. It'll be flush with the uh, front of this part here, and uh, it'll have uh, lights in it. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to account for the framework here, so you know it's going to go this way and then kind of go down at an angle and then follow the wall down. And uh, so I'm thinking maybe two shelves, eight feet long. Uh, they can, like I said, sit underneath there. And one of the things I wanted to do is figure out how I was going to light it. 
and I found something I want to show you that. Now, if you've watched the live stream, you've noticed uh, that in the background, I usually have this string of lights on doing some interesting little pattern. This is just a string of LED lights. Uh, I've told the story about how I got that before. Uh, so if you're interested, you can go back and look at that. But I started thinking about using something similar to this to light up my display case. And I actually found something at Home Depot. I've been looking at these for a while and uh, decided to buy one just to see what it looks like and figure out you know, how I was going to make it work. And so I got one of those at Home Depot. And let me show you what it is. So I got this little eight foot long string of lights. It comes with a little remote control and uh, you can do uh, different patterns. You can do solid colors if you want, uh, like, you know, red, green, blue. And there's different shades of things, or there's different patterns that they can have uh, going through here, like the one here where it just flashes through all the colors. ones where it kind of fades in and out to different colors and stuff like that. And I, th I thought that was kind of cool. And like I said, it's eight feet long, which is perfect because that's how long I want this thing to be is eight feet long. It's, and I'm, so I'm gonna, I wanted to see what this looked like. And I think this is going to work really well. It turns out on the back of this, there's just a double stick uh, tape kind of thing. You pull it off and it just sticks to the underside of the, of the uh, whatever you're attaching it to. And see, it doesn't have to be even the funky colors. There's also just a white color. And so I can use that and I think it'll look really nice. And this is how we're gonna light up the case. So I don't know, that's where we're, where we're going on this. Uh, we'll continue with this project in, in future weeks, but stay tuned. So I think that's all that I have for today's video. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.